here, in this section, you can see a repeat of those small little arteries we call an arteriole. They're very, very small. You're looking here at a very high magnification. But still, you can point out the nuclei bulging of the endothelial cell, the endothelium. You can even make out a very small component wiggly line there, which is the internal elastic lamina. But notice there are only one or two layers of smooth muscle around each of these vessels. And then you really can't see components of the adventitia on the outside. It just blends in with surrounding connective tissue. But I want to mention the pericyte. On the right hand side, you can see a little tiny vessel. This little tiny vessel is surrounded by an endothelium. Remember the endothelium is the lining of the capillary. If I just take away the label, have a look at this tiny little vessel. Try and pick out a nucleus that will be the endothelial cell nucleus. I know this is very hard, and it is very hard. But just on the outside of this very, very small vessel, it's a little capillary actually, is another nucleus we call the nucleus of the pericyte. This pericyte is very important. It wraps around very small vessels, particularly capillaries, and it has a number of functions. You know, during my early research career, I used to study pericytes and the function they had. Because at that stage, they were thought to inhibit the growth of capillaries and therefore maintain a certain proportion of a tissue that's occupied by the blood circulation. And one of the big problems with cancers is that once the cancer cells spread and get into other organs, they attract the blood supply. And therefore, more and more blood vessels grow into the tumour and therefore the surrounding healthy tissue is starved and dies. Well, my interest was on these pericyte cells because they were said to be inhibitory to maintain low growth of blood capillaries. And I thought if you could actually try to get those pericytes to stop blood vessel growth in tumours, then you'd be able to limit the growth of the tumour and the blood flow through them. And that's led on to further research in trying to control what we call angiogenesis, the generation of new blood vessels, particularly in relation to controlling tumour growth and spreading of cancers. Well, these pericytes also have other functions. They're said to be able to divide and actually turn into maybe smooth muscle cells or adventitial cells, again, in situations where the capillary bed may be expanding and growing further. They're actually surrounded by the external lamina of the endothelial cell, or a term that we call the basal lamina, because these are in fact endothelium. And because the pericyte is surrounded by the basal lamina of the endothelium, or shares the basal lamina of the endothelium, it's actually not a connective tissue cell. Sometimes we often refer to pericytes as being a connective tissue cell. But because they are separated from the connective tissue elements by this basal lamina, it means that they're really epithelial. I'm sure in the future, these pericytes will be assigned a lot more functions and a lot more importance. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.